Engine oils are like religions. You got the house of Valvoline, the church of pins oil, Quakers, Tate. And when I was doing my research for this episode, I quickly found out for whatever reason that engine oil is a polarizing topic. So when I was browsing the aisles of my local dollar store and I came across this budget oil, I got curious. What is this mystery oil that costs the same as a four pack of fruit striped gum? Well, today we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna talk about engine rolls, what's inside the cheap stuff, and see how it compares to the top shelf oil. And while we're at it, we're gonna see who here at Donut has the dirtiest oil pumping through their engine. Is it me? Nope. Big thanks to Dr. Squatch for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> Good one, friend. Your skin is your largest organ, so why are so many of you still using that chemical goo that you discovered in grade school? Well, I don't smell. You may not smell yet. That's just a cover-up of the soap you're using, and it's not keeping your skin as healthy as it could and should be. Before Dr. Squatch, I was using some big box, chemical-filled soap that I thought smelled good, but I probably smelled like this. <gasps> oh, gross. So treat yourself to the lathery goodness of Dr. Squatch soap. I mean, after all, I want to smell like a crisp IPA or goat's milk from the deep sea. Take it from me, a real man. I grew all this corn. So boys, ascend to real manliness. Eat your vegetables, take care of yourself, and be proud of your smell. Your skin will thank you later. Head over to DrSquatch.com and use code DONUT20. Get 20% off site-wide on purchases $20 or more and click the link below to check out Dr. Squatch's best-selling bundles. You are mythical. Engine oil is pretty important for your engine. If you take two chunks of metal and you try to get them to slide on each other, it doesn't work. The coefficient of friction between those two surfaces is high enough to prevent them from slipping. But when we add engine oil into the mix, it creates a thin film that separates the metal surfaces and allows the parts to move. This is what's going on in your engine. You have a bunch of metal components moving around that need that layer of oil in between them so that they can function properly. Now, not only is the oil there to lube stuff up, it's also there to clean your engine as well as cool it down. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I once thought a long time ago that oil was just rotted dinosaurs. But in fact, crude oil was formed millions of years before T-Rex and his little claws were stomping around. See, this used to be a big old ocean, right? And the animals and plant life that were living in that ocean, when they died, they fell to the bottom of it. And when they decomposed, they turned into a sludge, which is basically just carbon and hydrogen atoms. Well, over millions and millions of years, sand and silt would build up on top of that sludge. And it created so much pressure and heat that it turned it into crude oil, which is just a bunch of hydrocarbons. Well, what we have behind me are what we call pump jacks. And they take that crude oil and they bring it up to the Earth's surface. And that crude oil is then shipped off to a refinery where it's made into all sorts of stuff, like gasoline, like diesel, jet fuel, and even formulate it into engine oil. Now, when crude oil is refined, it's put back under high heat and pressure. And when you do that, you can separate the light and heavy hydrocarbons. Now, hydrocarbon, that's just a chain of carbon and hydrogen atoms. That's all this stuff is. So the light hydrocarbons, they're pulled off and refined to make fuels like gasoline and diesel. And the heavier hydrocarbons, they're used for base oils. And the three you know, big components that you use in an engine oil to control things is the, the base oil, which is about 85% of the formulation. That gives you your lubrication and your viscometrics. Um, you then have your additives, which is the most expensive part, kind of like the active ingredient, um, if you will. That brings, brings in wear protection, it brings in sludge control, it brings in oxidation control so your oil doesn't break down. And the last thing is, is viscosity modifiers, which are polymers, uh, which basically ensure that as your oil heats up, it doesn't thin out too much. This is Dr. Michael Warholek, who holds a PhD in fluid mechanics and is the technology manager for Valvoline. Now, given that he says 85% of an oil starts with its base oil, we should probably figure out what this stuff is. 
Well, luckily the American Petroleum Institute or API for short, they categorize base oils into five main groups. Now this breakdown is based on the refining method and the base oils properties, how much sulfur the oil contains, its saturate level and its viscosity index. And from those three properties, we can create a chart that breaks down our five base oils. Groups one, two, and three, they're conventional oils, meaning they're refined from crude oil, all that freaking dino juice that's under the ground. Group three is the best because it has the lower sulfur content, it's got the highest saturate level, and it's got a high viscosity index. Now, on the other hand, we have groups four and five, and they are synthetic based oils, meaning they're synthesized in a lab, they're man-made. Group four oils are made from polyalpha olefins, also called PAOs. And group five base oils are also chemically engineered oils. And typically, when it comes to the engine oil game, at least, they're not used as a base oil. They're just used as an additive to other base oils. Now, as you go up the ladder, the better functioning the base stock is and the higher price you pay for the final oil formulation. Well, kind of. A company can label an oil as synthetic here in the USA, making you think you got a group four base stock, but really it's conventional oil. In fact, the term fully synthetic is nothing more than a marketing ploy. We're not gonna go down that route. That's like a little bit too wheelhousey for us. Maybe no one will do something about it. Anyways, my point is, is that if you start off with a lower grade base stock, the oil is going to be cheaper, like a dollar per bottle cheap. But that cheap price comes with a trade-off. Um, because the base oil is really your the foundation that you're building your uh, your house on, right? So, so the, the better base oil that you have, the better performance that oil is going to give you. And actually, the, the more you can do on, on the additive side. But why is using a lower tier base stock worse when it comes to using it in your engine? Well, conventional oils like this, they're a mix of different hydrocarbon molecules that are non-uniform. The refining process, it didn't separate out different size molecules. And as a result, you get a lubricant with different shapes and sizes. That's important to know because the difference in size creates an oil that creates an irregular lubricant surface. If you were to zoom in with a microscope and check out that layer of oil in between your two metal surfaces, you'd see some height differences there. And these various size molecules, they generate friction within the fluid. That then causes your engine to need more power to overcome that added friction. Now on the other hand, hello, because group four oils are man-made, they don't have these molecular problems. The scientists making these oils, they can control that molecular structure to achieve whatever functional properties the oil is after. Now this molecular uniformity creates a size uniformity, meaning all the molecules are the same shape and size. Because of this, they have a broader temperature range. They have better protection at high temps and they lack that higher friction within the fluid, making them more efficient. So today we are going to put our dollar store oil through some homegrown bench testing and see how it fares to some top shelf Valvoline. And if you're wondering why are we using Valvoline? Well, it's because they're the fucking best. And also we just so happen to have a partnership with them here at Donut. We just got a bunch of it around the shop. They didn't sponsor this episode. So whatever happens, happens. And before all you oil hoes get all tested with me and ask me, hey, why didn't you test this oil, that oil? Really, I'm only trying to find out more about this dollar store oil. We're just using some of these other more well-known brands for context. Now, that being said, we've decided to use the same weight oil in our evaluation, 10W30. Apples to apples, we're not gonna switch it up. They're gonna be all 10W30, baby. So, first things first, I need to make sure this oil says what it actually is, 10W30. So how do I go and do that? Well, I'm gonna go off and send a virgin oil sample to get analyzed by an oil analysis lab. So the lab doing this analysis, they'll do a verified test for viscosity and report back a number. And if that number falls in between the ranges as defined by the test, then we'll know that driver's choice is in line. You can also just look at the bottle. So this little stamp right here is called the API donut and it identifies engine oils that meet certain API oil standards. So if it says 10W30 on it, the API approves this claim. But freaking anybody could just Photoshop that, and print it on this bottle. So in the meantime, I'm gonna run my own little viscosity experiment here in the donut lab. So we're gonna take this oil and we're gonna cool it down as cold as we can get it, around minus 10 degrees Celsius. And then we're gonna pour it down our donut ramp here and compare it to other 10W30 oils and see how it fares. This will give us an idea if this driver's choice oil is even in the ballpark of other 10W30 oils. So I have the synthetic Valvoline, the 
conventional Valvoline and our driver's choice, all in 10 W30 weight. So we're gonna pour it down this ramp and I'm gonna see how our driver's choice compares to these other two oils. Let's see what happens. Mmm, wins. Okay, that's pretty interesting. It looks like the lower temperature range of this oil is on par with these other two. But a virgin oil sample, that's not all that telling, right? What's more important is if we look at the oil once it's been heat cycled and used a little bit. Engine oil begins to break down at around 275 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna heat up this oil to that temperature, then cool it back down to around minus 10 degrees and run the same test to see if we maintain our 10 weight spec after the oil went past its normal operating temperature. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, it's so close. Oh! So the purpose of this test wasn't to determine a winner or a loser per se. It was just to see whether or not this 10W30 driver's choice oil was in the ballpark of some other 10W30 oils. And it turns out it is. And it is when you heat it up, it is when you cool it down, it's in that general range. So it's probably safe to say that if it says 10W30 on it, it is. We're also gonna do an evaporation test. To do that, I'm gonna weigh out a set amount of oil, each of our three oils. I'm gonna put it on a hot plate. I'm gonna crank it up to 150 degrees C and I'm gonna let it sit there for 30 minutes. I'll then take it off the hot plate and then put it back on the scale and see how much oil has evaporated in that time. So as you can see here, our dollar store oil evaporated off 1.39 grams over that course of 30 minutes, which is around 2.76% of the total starting volume. Now that's right on par with these other two oils, the Valvoline Conventional and the Valvoline Synthetic, which means that this dollar store oil is in the ballpark of these other 10W30 oils. Now we can confirm that this is a 10W30 oil on the practical side of things, but what about chemically? What happens when we use a more scientific method like spectroscopy to find out what's going on inside this oil? Now, Dr. Warholic mentioned that there are a few other components outside of the base stock that determine the quality of the oil. That's the additives and the viscosity modifiers. So if you start out with crude oil, you're fine into your base oil, and then you add additives, that's what gets you engine oil. And luckily with our report in hand, we can look at what additives and how much of each of these additives are inside our oil sample. So here I have a printed out report of our driver's choice dollar store oil. And if you look at it, they have a bunch of different elements on the left hand side and a bunch of different numbers corresponding to those elements. Now we have 22 elements, each of them telling us a different thing about our oil. Now, because this is a virgin oil sample, meaning we haven't run it through an engine, there's not gonna be any values next to our metals, but there are some values next to our additives. So we have boron, calcium, magnesium, and barium. These are detergents. We have molybdenum, phosphorus, zinc. These are anti-wear agents. So the purpose of additives is they improve the performance of your base oil. The manufacturer of a bunch of different oils, they can take the same base stock for each formulation and then choose different additives for their specific application. In some oils, the additives make up 5% of the weight of the oil. And modern engines, they gotta have additives in there. Without them, the oil would become contaminated. The oil would break down, it'd leak out, and it'd not properly protect the engine parts at all operating temperatures. Now these are your detergents, and they clean the metal parts in your engine and prevent a bunch of sludge and stuff from building up. And these right here, these are your anti-wear agents, and they do, surprise, surprise, exactly that. They prevent items like your valves from wearing out and creating gaps that oil can then get past in what's called blow-by. And this right here, this is an important number. This is called your TBN. So TBN, it measures how much base additive is in the oil to offset the effects of acids coming in to the oil from the combustion process and the wear of metal. So your engine oil has a set pH, and when it's running through your engine over time, it gets more acidic as it goes along. The combustion process creates acid in your oil. The lower the TBN reading, the less active additive the oil has left. So that's a great segue into looking at who here at Donut has the worst oil. Do, 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 do.
So I have six reports in my hand. We got Zach's GX470, we have my GX470, we have Kanan's Ford Ranger, we have Nolan's Mustang, we have Christina's Prius, and we have Eddie's Miata. Now, let's get down to brass tacks and see who's got freaking worst oil out of all these six people. Now to do that, I'm gonna focus on the bottom of this report. We're gonna start with the TBN value. Now, it just so happens that I have the lowest TBN value, which is an indicator that my oil is old. But I do have to say, I took a sample of my GX470's oil when I bought it. So this isn't when I was operating the vehicle, it's when the person before me. So it's got a low TBN value, but still it's pretty good. It's above the minimum value of one, which is what you want. Who has the highest TBN is freaking Nolan. <laughs> Goes to Nolan, uh, no, sorry, it doesn't go to Nolan. <laughs> sorry, Nolan, it goes to Eddie Spaghetti, which makes sense because Eddie actually recently changed his oil. He's got fresh, fresh old oil in there. Now, other things we can look at to determine how old the oil is, is looking at the percent of water. Everyone on here has got 0% water, that's great. You can also look at the percent of antifreeze. Everyone here has 0% antifreeze, which is also good. We can look at the insoluble percentage, and that's the amount of solids that have formed due to oxidation. And the person who's got the worst one of that is a tie between Kanan and Nolan. Two more things we can look at is the viscosity and the flash point. The lower the flash point, the older the oil is. The viscosity, the lower the viscosity, also the more that oil has broken down over time. And if we put all those factors into play, we can determine who needs to change their engine oil. And that goes to, drum roll please, Nolan. Nolan, change the engine oil, man. Sorry to throw you under the bus, that's why I stole your keys. You probably didn't know I did that, but when you watch this video, you will. And if you're curious who has the cleanest oil, it actually turns out to be Christina and I. We, we tied, so put it there, Tina. Yeah, we got good freaking engine. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of B2B. Uh, thank you, Dr. Waholic, for letting me pick your brain, talk about engine oil. This is the first episode of B2B of the new year. Happy 2021. Follow us here at Donut on Instagram, at Donut Media. Follow me on Instagram, at Jeremiah Burton. Until next week, bye for now. 2021, here we come. <laughs>